Mixing up the CNO Enchantment Blue is pretty easy. This stuff is always very, very easy to work with, and that's one of the things why so many people love the uh, polyscale paints because they're so easy to work with, but they coat so well and they go on so evenly. Um, I'm not going to need too much of this paint, and like I said, it is pretty hard to get at this point, so I'm not going to try to waste any of this for sure. I definitely would like to try to save it. After I get the little bit I need out and onto the or into the canister, I'll just kind of clean up the edge of my bottle. This is the only thing I don't like about the polyscale bottles is that the paint has a tendency to kind of gather on the side and then it dries and then you can't get the cap off. Common problem with this kind of bottle, but we'll just go ahead and set this aside so we don't spill it and now I can go ahead and dilute the paint down. I'm using 50% isopropyl alcohol. I wouldn't recommend you use any higher grade of alcohol uh, to dilute the paint down and you don't need too much. That was literally a couple drops and I'll show you guys the consistency here. It's uh, pretty well thinned down. I'm just going to go in with a brush now and mix this up really really well. I haven't used this paint in a while so I want to make sure there's no chunks or any kind of you know separated paint or anything like that. I mixed it up pretty well prior to pouring it into the little canister but I just want to double check and make sure. I'm using a paint brush here too because I find this works pretty well to mix the paint together. Just being kind of gentle. It looks pretty good. Here's the consistency we're going for. It's pretty thin. About like skim milk. I always say that. It's about like skim milk. Try to aim for this consistency you see when airbrushing anything from acrylics. Uh, any kind of paint really. This is the best consistency for spraying that I find. As usual I'm running my airbrush at I believe 45 psi is my standard setting for this and I'm using a Pache model airbrush here. Uh, my best friend for model painting, weathering, etc. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and get this hooked up here and we'll go ahead and start painting. So starting at the ends, I'm just going to slowly start building this color up. We'll get it in all the nooks and crannies, slowly start applying it. So it's kind of hard to see but you can see all of our nice detail work is done with the painting. We got the steps beautifully painted, they look really really good and you can see all of our work has literally blended in. It looks like the car was made this way and it looks really nice. I'm really happy with that. Um, on the other end, same thing. And then on the underbody itself, I had enough paint left over in the uh, from what I had diluted down and I just decided to go ahead and use it up. So I just sprayed a couple coats of the blue on the underbody as well and it's fine. I know there's again some parts that are black on the underbody so I'll just hand paint those later. I probably won't show that process but you can see the whole underbody is basically painted and it's ready to go in the lovely CNO Enchantment Blue. So we'll go ahead and set the underbody aside. Uh, the only other thing we got to paint blue are the trucks and then there's going to be some sill work that will be done. Uh, there's a blue stripe on the underbody of this car on the sill that we had modified that we'll have to paint. I'll probably just spray that on later on once we get the blue, uh, yellow on. When you're doing paint jobs like this always think about the lightest color first. For example like you wouldn't want to paint blue or black or something like that first and then try to paint a lighter color like white, yellow, orange. A color like that is going to take a lot of coats to cover a darker color. Uh, so it's always best to start with the lighter colors first and then work your way into the darker colors if that makes any sense. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. So the next thing will be to go ahead and start spraying the yellow and now we'll get to see. Okay so I'm going to be using the True Color CNO BNO Yellow uh, which is obviously the best match for this color so hence the title True Color. Some of the best paint you can use uh, color match wise. Now it's advertised that this paint can be sprayed on without diluting it. No, never under any circumstances assume that you can use a paint straight from the bottle, even if it is advertised that you can. Uh, always uh, predict, uh, check the paint, see what you're dealing with. If you have to dilute it, dilute it. In this case, a lot of times I use true color paint, and it says right on the bottle that you don't have to dilute it, but every time I use it, no matter what kind of airbrush setting I get, 
I usually end up having to dilute it anyway because it usually is pretty thick. Uh, so in a paint in a case like this, I will have to dilute this. Uh, usually you use acetone, paint thinner, uh, anything like that. Don't use alcohol. Never use alcohol for this stuff. It'll uh, it'll make a hell of a mess. So keep that in mind. Anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, get ready to spray this on. I just wanted to share that tidbit with you. If you're going to use a paint like this and it advertises that, never assume you can. Always check it first. You never want to take a paint like this, spray it on a model, and then gunk up your airbrush or get splatter all over your model because it's not spraying properly. So just to keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and get sprayed. So here we got the yellow sprayed on the car. Uh, as always, very, very, uh, very happy with the results of the true color paint. Looks really good. It sprayed really well. Um, it is hard to clean out of your airbrush. Uh, you got to use a lot of thinner, but it worked pretty well. It applied really well, so I'm really happy with the paint job. Uh, you'll notice too, I went ahead and rescribed the panel lines into the primer before I did the paint job, and that helped to restore those, uh, so it looks pretty good. Um, also painted the end railings. They're pretty much ready. They will get orange corner trim later on, but they're completely painted yellow now, as you can see. They look really good. Again, a nice, even, clean looking paint job. And so basically, all these parts are ready to get gloss coated in preparation for decals. Um, what we got to do first is go ahead and finish the paint job on the this caboose itself. These parts I'll go ahead and have set aside and we'll keep moving on with the project. Alright, so I got the car sitting here on my bench and I've taken some tape and masked off the top portion of the car. That way I can do the orange striping. Uh, the chassis system had a wonderful paint scheme of the bright yellow, the vibrant orange, and then the dark uh, enchantment blue. Um, and it's pretty easy to do on a car like this. Uh, for this particular case, if I was doing a fresh paint job, I would airbrush all this, but since I'm going to be weathering this and I want the paint to look kind of rough, I'm going to hand paint it. And this is just something you can do if you want to model uh, well-worn weathered paint like uh, what is on the 903985. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is using a fine tip brush, um, and then I'm going to be using a broader brush like this, a uh, liner brush. Uh, to kind of hit these areas, but where I need to get into the final, de uh, the finer details is like areas like this, where there's the separation stripe here that borders between the yellow and then the blue, which would be on the bottom sill. So we need to be able to carefully paint this, and this is what this brush will be used for. So for portions of the top, I'm just going to be taking my liner brush. I'm going to be tucking it into the top sill here. Uh, the orange paint extends underneath this little lip on the top you see that little lip there it goes underneath that so we need to make sure we get the paint really well tucked under there so I'm just gonna kinda scrub it in first we can go back over this in a second and smooth things out with another coat uh, but right now this is about getting the paint tucked into all the areas once you do that then you can just go back over and smooth it out like that uh, so very very simple as you can see um, I know it's not very, not really showing up too well on this camera because of the lighting right now. It's um, pretty late in the afternoon, so the sun's starting to shine in my window. And I can barely even see the transition between the orange and the yellow in this camera. But I'm just painting all this trim at the top orange, if you guys can see that very well. So we're just going to keep going on here. So with the orange stripes licked, we're going to go ahead and hand paint the blue underbody. With this, I've basically taken a little bit of uh, light blue acrylic. It's kind of like a primer to go over the uh, bright yellow. That way, it's not as hard to uh, paint the actual relatively thin, dark color of the uh, polyscale enchantment blue. So when you're working with colors like this and you're just doing it freehand, you know, I say this all the time, but take your time, don't rush it. Getting under the sand rail is a bit tricky too, so I'm just going to try to go back there. If we need to touch up anything, we'll just do that after we get the blue done, but for now we're only worried about the blue. So the roof of these cars is prominently silver on painted metal, and I want to basically paint this by hand as well. Again, this is an area you could mask off. Alright, so here's where we're at so far, guys. Um, you can see all the yellows painted. We got the orange officially done. Um, I had to paint the orange twice 
uh, to make it stand out a little better. I got the roof painted with the silver. It looks pretty good. Uh, it's kind of glossy and a little uneven, but that's okay. Uh, I want this all to be kind of weathered up anyway, so that was kind of the idea of hand painting it. I wanted to have some texture to it because the roofs on these cars just rusted to hell, and I want it to look pitted and uh, a bit oxidized later on. So that'll help with the weathering effect. Anyway, both sides are painted. We got the blue on and everything. I know it doesn't look too great, but it'll look better once we get everything gloss coated and we get the white trim on. The only other thing I got to paint on the ends is the door. The door is a dark blue color, and that's what we got to do next. Um, but the shell's coming along here. I'm pretty happy with it so far. And then, if we look at the ends, this is what I got done. They're pretty much done and ready for gloss coat and decals. I got the white handrail trim painted and then I got the orange corners added to this car. So it looks pretty good. So I'm really happy with the ends. Look good. Now if we look at the underbody here, everything is looking really really nice. With the uh, bright blue. So all we gotta do now is paint the uh, trim on the caboose and then the trim on the walkways here white. So I'm just painting small details like this by hand. This is very simple to do. Probably have to cover this up with I'd say two coats of acrylic white to get it to stand out. The end of this retainer is also painted white, so I'm just brush painting this detail as well to make it stand out. 